We're underway to assist several members of the former Voyager crew in opening diplomatic channels with various Delta Quadrant races. After aiding the Turei in defence of their homeworld for a second time, we set a course for the Nellis system to aid Alliance Ambassador Neelix in his negotiations with the Hazari mercenary fleet. Neelix is already in the system and has begun a dialogue with the Hazari. Tarsi notes that this system is a hotbed of pirate activity and a routine meeting point for bounty hunters and mercenaries, so the Bentham Guard, space cops basically, keep a vessel in the system for patrol's sake. There are several bases dotted around, the most notable of which is a station orbited by several other ships, some sort of active trade hub it seems. As we move into rendezvous with Neelix's shuttle, the Baxial, we even pass a Malon tanker. Who knows what business they had here, but in this sort of place it's better to keep to your own. We pull up behind his diminutive vessel, the bulk of the USS Anglia adding weight to his words, and he hails us. Oh, thank goodness you've arrived! I'm trying to work with the Hazari, but they are a demanding lot. They're using this opportunity to milk the Benthans for everything they've got. Well, the Hazari are shrewd and won't take action until a contract is secured, so I take it they have a lot of demands? To say the least. First, they want the Benthans to void the warrants of three of the Hazari, Niken, Yakela, and Nagrasa. Then, they want two prisoners released. And if that weren't enough, they're demanding bounty hunting licenses for the Ramar, Zilman, and us printy systems. Neelix, I'm an outsider here. Patch me in. Pleasure to see you again. I assume you can speak with more authority than this Talaxian. Hello, Idren. Neelix has my full confidence, and your list of demands is quite excessive. But as we are allied with the Benthans, I can mediate your requests. I hope today ends with the Hazari securing a lucrative contract with us. We can all benefit from it. Then I wish you good luck. Your offer is tempting, but we simply don't have any help to give you. All of my resources have to be focused on the Benthans breathing down our necks. I'll see what we can work out. The Benthans usually have a ship patrolling this area of the system. It's a neutral ground, but they know what can happen in neutral areas. The ship should be able to contact the Bentham High just a car for us. Ah, bring us into range of that Bentham vessel lurking on the edge of the system then. I can see them watching us. The Benthans keep a close eye on this system. Lots of deals are made here. So, we've aided the Benthans once before with a feisty Kazon sect, and fortunately their goals of bringing order to this quadrant align rather nicely with the Delta Alliances, so them joining up was a no-brainer. But their adherence to their law might cost us the aid of the Hazari, and unfortunately, it's vital to get the Hazari on board. I am High Justicar Methan. I was told you needed to speak to me on a critical matter. I'm sure you're aware of the Delta Alliance we're building to unify the Quadrant against the Vardois. Well, I'll need your assistance, High Justicar Methan. Oh? How can we assist you? I like the Benthans, they're generally so polite. So we're trying to recruit the Hazari, and they have a list of demands they want from, well, you, though. It's always demands when it comes to the Hazari. Demands, deals, and contracts. Transmit their list. I haven't had a good laugh in days. We transmit the list to the Bentham Command via their battleship here. There's no way we'd agree to all this. I'm sorry. Well, then let's start with the bits and pieces you can afford to agree to. Let's see if we can haggle it down, as once the Alliance has secured a contract with the Hazari, their help is locked in. Also, apologies for the transmission quality. I guess it's because we're relaying the signal through your patrol vessel. Good point. I can rescind the warrants for Niken and Yakela, but not Negrasa. He's caused too much trouble to let him go free. And the prisoners, I'll exchange them for Nekedra. If the Hazari will give him up, he's been raising havoc in three sectors. I'll give them one of the systems for hunting, but not all three. Let them choose which one they want. Thank you for being willing to negotiate, and I'll take your counteroffer to the Hazari. Will they give us what we want? Well, I've spoken to the High Justicar, and they've seen your demands. They're not entirely agreed, but... Of course we knew they wouldn't give us everything. But if you don't ask for everything, you won't get anything, hmm? Oh good, the Hazari were aware that they were pushing for more than they needed, shrewd negotiating there. So we relay Just Carmenthan's amendments to their requests. 
What? Uh, oh, I mean good. Let's see here. We give the Benthans Nikedon, and we get two of our captains back? <laughs> Done. Nikedon is a Bashik Monar. I think the closest translation we have to your language is a pit where you throw your pack animal. Take him, but he won't go without a fight. So we hand him over to the Benthans and your contract with the Alliance? Sure, I'll draw up the contract. Just transmit your authorization and you've got a deal. As soon as the Benthans deliver, the Hazari are part of your alliance. Nakedin is in hiding, but I'll give you an encoded signal to lure him out. He'll think it's one of our ships giving him the all clear. <laughs> you can use one of the Benthan satellites nearby to relay the signal. We send signals on them all the time. It'll lend to your credibility. So, the Hazari are willing to sell out one of their own, an admitted troublemaker, to secure the release of two of their captains and gain a license to bounty hunt in a Benthan controlled system. In return for sorting all of this out, they'll lend their mercenary force to the Alliance. That sounds like a decent trade. It is imperative, after all, that we secure a contract with the Hazari before the Vardwar do. So, once in range of the Benthan satellite, we send the Hazari meeting signal to lure in Enkeden. A trap? Fine, I'll kill you then, my so-called friends. Well, he's as happy to see us as Idrim predicted. We charge weapons and deploy our small squadron. And Kaden's ship is rather powerful, but he gives up after a brief exchange of fire. He's not looking to be destroyed after all. Fine, fine, fine. I won't lose my ship and crew for this. You've beaten me. As a deputised agent and space cop extraordinaire of the Benthan Guard, I am placing you under arrest. Lower your shields and prepare to be beamed to our brig, where we will deliver you to the Benthan what? Guard. The Benthans? I thought I'd be going to one of your prisons. I can escape from one of those in a week. How do you know that? You know what? Never mind. Are you coming quietly? Sorry, that was me powering up the phase cannons again. Lowering shields now. Just don't vaporise me. Well, it looks like we've done quite a number on his vessel, though. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't have to destroy it. That would have really scuppered our plans. We beam the troublesome bounty hunter to our brig and set a course back to the nearby Bentham patrol ship. We should take our prisoner to that Bentham patrol ship. The transfer goes off without a hitch, but Neelix voices some concerns. The Hazari seem a little too happy about this outcome. Even if Yadren doesn't like Nekedrin, I didn't think he'd be so quick to give him up to the Benthans. I guess they really hated him. He could have been causing them too much trouble with the law. I don't think that's the case. You suspect there's more going on? Well, you're the businessman turned negotiator and local knowledge. Let's hail Idrin about all of this. On behalf of all the Hazari, thank you for delivering that Grotok Nekedrin to the Benthans. So come on then, Idrin. What's your angle? This does seem like a win-win for the Hazari. Oh, what can it hurt now? We've got an airtight contract. Remember those hollow emitters we got from that Ferengi? He also sold us a nice, personal-sized one with a low-emission power pack. Right. We gave that one to Nikedin. <laughs> right about now, he should be slipping out of the brig and into the crew of that Benthan cruiser you delivered him to. <laughs> a spy on the high Justicar ship. We'll know everything. You know the Benthans are our allies, right? I'm gonna have to go tell them. Not so fast. Our contract specifically states that you cannot interfere in the matter of Captain Nikedin once you have delivered him to the Benthans. Telling them would be the very definition of interference. And if we break the deal, then the Hazari can walk, probably straight to the Vardoir. We can choose the option to violate the contract anyway and inform the Benthans, or we can choose to keep our peace. I tell Idren that we will honour that part of our contract. And that's done. I'll meet you back at Voyager. Besides, I'm sure if we need to, we can leak in Kaden's disguise at some point. I understand the Hazari used the pretense of the Alliance to place a spy on the Benthan ship, and that their contact with us will be voided if we inform the Benthans of his presence. Fortunately, we have our own operatives in the Hazari organization. They will be able to marginalize the effectiveness of the Hazari spy, while still keeping them as a tool to use against the Vodwar. 
We already have operatives within the Hazari? Are they infiltrators or did we just buy them? That's the trouble with the mercenary culture, but at least the Admiral is in agreement. Well, we've secured the Hazari's cooperation and we'll do our best to deal with their spies. Although if it does come down to it, I'll choose the Bentham Guard over the Hazari any day. The next phase of this mission sees us try to meet up with the EMH Doctor in the Pribal system, although there appears to be no one in sight. His mission was covert after all, one to infiltrate the hierarchy and influence their adaptive cost analysis matrix into proving that it would be profitable in joining us. Chances are he's just hiding and waiting for us to announce ourselves. Uh, you know, sometimes it's just nice to warp into a system and just have it quiet. No crisis, no ambush. Almost like we're explorers again. Ah yeah, well. We send out our coded handshake to see if we can find the Doctor. Hello again. I thought it would be best if I used your bridge's hollow emitters for this conversation. I'm currently in disguise on board the hierarchy ship as one of those potato-looking fellows, and I don't think you want to see any more of this than you have to. It's fine, Doctor. How's the situation looking? The hierarchy assume I'm one of the crew. I've begun a review of their cost analysis matrix, which is what they use to determine if any particular course of action will be profitable. Right now, their ship is running silent, which means they're cloaked, and all higher level computer functions are locked out. I need those to complete my review. You need to convince them to decloak. Hail them. Show them their cloak isn't enough to hide them from the Alliance. Then, you might be able to convince them to join. But it is. We can't see them. Wait, we're going to lie to them to get them on board? Uh, well, I guess if we have to. The ship is currently cloaked by one of the nav beacons in this region of space. Just head to the nav beacon and you'll get their attention. I can see it. So we walk into the room and shout, found you, and hope that they decloak, like zero effort hide and seek. The hierarchy once corrupted my programming in an attempt to spy on Voyager. This seems fitting. These subroutines are quite useful. Perhaps I'll write a hollow novel about my experiences as a spy. Yeah, those are always popular. We're going to call it Dr. Low Res, man with a photonic gun. Oh, live and let light. You can have that one, Doc. Although I'm not sure about the ethics of this mission. We're basically going to be influencing their culture into joining us. Although if we don't actually tamper with their cost matrix, it technically wouldn't be interference. Still, this would be the second underhanded deal we've made today. Uh, so we stop just by the nav buoy and open a general hail. <clears throat> Hierarchy vessel, we know you are there. Respond. That's close enough. I don't want any trouble, but I would like to know how you knew our location. Carrot juice, good for the eyes. Suffice to say, you seem to have underestimated the Alliance's power. Join us in our fights against the Vardois and we can discuss a potential alliance and share those benefits. Hmm, don't tell us your secrets and we won't tell you ours. As for your offer of an alliance, give me a moment to consider it. You may have your moment. Mute the comm line. The hierarchy is consulting the cost analysis matrix. This is exactly what I needed. Hmm. This is going to take some time. We'll need to stall them while I get what I need. All right, I'll keep them talking. Just try not to tamper, Doc. Just look for a loophole we can exploit. Okay, hierarchy vessel, your moment is up. I am sorry, but the hierarchy has evaluated the investment needed for such an undertaking. And we find that the Alliance ships are simply outmatched by the Vatwar. There's no profit in losing. We'll stay out of this fight. Well, I'm sorry to hear that's what some algorithm says, but I disagree with your analysis of our capabilities. I have an idea. Follow my lead. Mute. Your lead, Doctor. Very well. Um... <laughs> Perhaps we could arrange for a demonstration of their abilities. Mm -hmm. I could reroute the cloaking device through our main deflector dish and create mm -hmm. convincing holographic targets for them to fight. <coughs> Sounds like a reasonable idea. You, you could do that. Very well. That will show us what these Alliance ships are capable of. Then we'll run the numbers again. 
Are you ready to prove your worth? Of course. I will show you just what an Alliance-built vessel is capable of, Supervisor Lovero. Uh, uh, two holographic Borg probes coming up. Just two Borg probes? Niet problemo. Borg probes? <laughs> Hardly a challenge. I want something big. Give me a Voth Bulwark. Also, I don't care if they can just defeat the hologram. I want to see how well this person works with their crew. Anyone can throw firepower at something. It's another thing to be a good manager of people. All right, you're testing me and my crew, not just my ship. One Voth Bulwark coming up. Well, in order to impress the hierarchy, not only do you have to destroy the holographic Voth vessel, but you have to utilize your crew's abilities. So use everything you have abilities, scientific effects, manage your repair crews, initiate attack patterns, and divert power to where it's needed. Basically, show off. By giving it everything we've got, their analysis matrix has to recalibrate the odds of our success. The matrix is struggling to adapt to you. Eventually, the simulacrum fades and we can reopen a channel to the hierarchy vessel to see if our performance has influenced their matrix. I... I, I don't believe it. Run the numbers again. Hmm. Very well. It seems that we underestimated you. If other ships are like yours, we'll gladly join your alliance. Oh, believe me, there are bigger and more powerful ships out of there as well as honestly better players. <coughs> I mean, captains. I'm not sure how he managed it, but we also subtly beam back the Doctor. As before, we contact Admiral Tuvok for our report. Excellent work, Doctor. Your recordings of the Hierarchy's cost analysis matrix will be a great benefit to Starfleet Intelligence. And you. I must say, bringing the Hierarchy into the Alliance is quite unexpected. I thought it would take weeks of back-channel negotiations to make any progress with them at all. Thank you for taking a risk. Your show of power must have been most impressive. No problem, Admiral. It's strange to see this side of Starfleet intelligence, surreptitiously making a recording of how this culture makes its decisions so that we can exploit it later. It seems that these past five years of constant war have taught the Federation some lessons. Then again, it is all going towards the benefit of the Alliance, and the entire Quadrant, whether they know that or not. I could justify this all by saying, how is this any different from a negotiator learning to read his opponent? It's just the hierarchy's way of doing things is a little quicker to crack with a spy or two. The next meeting we have should be a solo one with the Octanti. However, a surprise waits for us. Greetings. I am on my way with several cooperative ships. It was simple enough to get them onto our side, but the real problem now is with the Octanti. The Octanti Consular should be at your location now. Please begin discussions without us. We shall be there soon. Alright, Seven. I wasn't expecting the company, although her presence may complicate things. You see, the Octanti have been resisting the Borg in all of their forms, even liberated former drones, like those that comprise the Borg Cooperative. We close in on the Octanti vessels we're here to meet and hail them. Greetings. I am Ambassador Rerick of the Octanti. Good day, Ambassador. It seems we're having some minor communications issues today. Please excuse them. I've examined the proposal your government's transmitted, and I'm afraid the Octanti people must decline. The Federation, the Klingon Empire, and the Romulan Republic all give rank and commissions to Borg drones. You call them liberated, but they are still Borg. The Borg drove us off our homeworld, and massacred our people. An alliance with them would be unthinkable. I understand your scepticism of the Borg. However, once separated from the collective hive mind, they are fully independent and capable of making their own decisions on things. They are free once again. True, some implants remain, but they're now critical to their survival. But they are people. Borg are Borg. We will not join your alliance. And we never will. Our people have lost too much already won't be led into another unwinnable war. Before we can counter, however, we are interrupted.
Well, shit. That was bad timing. This is Seven of Nine. I have a priority message for the Octanti. We're already in dialogue. I'll patch you in, Seven. Ambassador Rarick, the cooperative has a problem with which they require your assistance. An Octanti synthetic virus has infected a recently liberated cube, causing severe problems for the fragile consciousnesses of the former drones. They are falling to madness. Our sensors show the cube is moving in this direction. You are in danger. If they didn't follow you, then how would they even know about this meeting? How would they know where the Octanti are? Unknown. We need the Octanti to transmit the shutdown code for the synthetic virus. If done quickly, the liberated Borg aboard the cube may recover. Ambassador Rerick, did you get that? The incoming Borg are part of the cooperative and not the Borg Collective. They are no longer drones. Please shut down your virus. If not, we're going to have to deal with some very angry and feral Borg. Never. If the virus infected them, then our work is done. They will destroy themselves. Rerick, please, we can't argue about this. Seven, how long till the Borg arrive? It's arriving now. Your time is up. Lower your prepare assimilated. Oh, great, they're insane. Ambassador, please deactivate the virus. There are thousands of liberated Borg on that cube who need your help. The Borg are a blight. The only course of action is extermination. We can allow the Octanti to destroy the Borg cube, but in doing so, it would endanger the alliance with the cooperative, or we can try to aid the corrupted cooperative vessel. I think the choice is clear. Rarick, where is Rarick? I know he is here. Please deactivate virus. Ah! Wait, what? Mask? Is that you? Rarick, do you know this Borg? That's my brother. He and four other Octanti volunteered to be infected with the virus and taken by the Borg seven years ago. Thought he was lost to us. Well, clearly, in those seven years, he's been liberated at some point, maybe due to your virus, but now that same virus is wreaking havoc among those who saved him. Deactivating now. Ah, it's not working. The cube's automated defenses are too strong. We'll need to weaken it before I can transmit the code. This is going to be hectic. We'll need to weaken the Borg cube's systems in order to create an opening in their firewall, as it were. Then that shutdown code can be transmitted and the virus that's corrupted, the cooperative, can be disabled. Hopefully before it does permanent damage to them, or the cube destroys us, for that matter. The cube is no joke. Even with the allied ships of the cooperative and the Octanti here, it takes a hell of a beating. Especially as we're not fighting to destroy it, but just to weaken it enough to allow for the signal to get through. I must admit to some discomfort at the thought that an ally of ours can so easily become a liability and how messed up it must be for those individuals aboard that ship to fall victim to some code that was meant to combat their shared enemy. We pull away with our shields fading and our hull critical, but it looks like the Octanti managed to get through. Eric, we intercepted a transmission about your meeting. It was right. You were here. I fought the madness to get to you. Dangerous. But I knew you would not abandon us. Thank you. You did well, Meshk. I'm just glad your brother got through when he did. I don't think we'd have lasted much longer. Meshk, I'm so overjoyed to see you. I never believed in this liberation idea. It was a fantasy, a grieving. But having seen it firsthand, hearing my brother's voice again, maybe I shouldn't have been so willing to dismiss hope. I will see that the Octanti people seriously consider your proposal. We need to reconsider many things. Well, another happy family reunited, more or less. If this can act as a bridge between these two sides, perhaps there's a chance for this alliance. We knew recruiting the Octanti was going to be problematic. You did exceptionally well with a very difficult task. Thank you, Admiral. One more to go then, Harry Kim and the Kazon. So, with our next destination set in, we'll see if we can go for all the points and recruit even the Kazon to our cause. As for this situation, well, it's going to be an uneasy alliance, but we've shown the Octanti today, the difference between a liberated Borg and a drone. As for our efforts with the Hazari and the Hierarchy, well, I'm not as comfortable resorting to the sort of underhanded tactics that we stooped to to get them on board. We allowed a spy to be planted among one of our own allies, and are sworn to secrecy, even if we try to mitigate their influence, it's still a betrayal of trust. 
but we cannot let the Hazari slink away to reinforce the Vardwar. If they're in our backyard, at least we have tabs on them, and they may still prove useful. The hierarchy, however? Well, we managed to change their mind by outperforming their predictive matrix, but is that like spoofing the results, lying to big ourselves up? Then again, we did fairly pass their test, so it could be us simply balancing the flaws in their system. Uh, what do you think? I think that given the circumstances, it was justified, but if it wasn't for the looming threat of the Vardois, I'm not so sure I'd be able to turn a blind eye. Oh, for the days of a more straightforward Starfleet, but I guess we just hid all that dirt. Admiral Tuvok was also scarily impassive and impressive about obtaining a recording of the Hierarchy's Matrix for intelligence to utilise in future dealings. Again, very practical, but uh, well... Ah, moral qualms aside, today was a good result. Now we just need to get those ununified Kazon on Team Alliance, and we're almost set. Until then, thanks for watching the crew of the USS Armage uh, Anglia. I have to do something about the name. Explore the ever expanding narrative of Star Trek Online. And until the next video, I've been Rick. Thanks again for watching, and goodbye.